Hi, Amanda. How are you? I'm hanging in there. How are you? Yeah, look, I'm actually in a good place at the moment. It's um, life always throws challenges and curveballs, but um, I'm seeming to be able to ride the waves right now. Yes. So for the people that aren't aware, we do record our episodes in advance. So right now is December 23rd, although this is going to be airing on December 26th here in the US and December 27th in Australia. Uh, so by then Christmas will have already happened, but we are creeping up on it. Are you ready we for are. Christmas? No. <laughs> In a word, no. Same. Same. <laughs> I've so, got fa family coming for lunch, and then in the afternoon, I've got some some single women coming to join me. Um, and yeah, I'm totally unprepared. No Christmas <laughs> decorations, no presents. I haven't even gone shopping yet. And here it is, the 24th of December at um, around 10 a.m. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. You had to wait for Mary's water to break to go and buy the Christmas presents for the baby Jesus, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, you know, my husband does that too. So, and I know this isn't even close to being the topic for today, but it kind of is. The stores are a nightmare right now. Oh, oh my gosh. I, I didn't even have it in me uh, to go out and go get we ran out of bacon and orange juice this morning and I didn't have it in me to go and get it we've had like a bad news here in the household with one of my cats so my husband went out to go and collect bacon and orange juice and he said he got to the store he had to park all the way in the very back parking lot was completely insane people are honking at each other and screaming and yelling and everybody's bustling in and out of the store and he gets into the store and the aisles are packed and he gets up to the registers and the lines are a mile long and he's looking around. He's like, I don't know what y'all are doing, but I'm just here for bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I had several errands to run. That was the worst of them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> bacon. I, I think with that in mind, uh, my shopping trip for cooking is going to take place around about 6 p.m. this evening when everybody will be out drinking or partying or whatever they're doing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hopefully. <laughs> Make it a little easier on you. <laughs> Except at 6 p.m., aren't you going to have to deal with all the single moms that are out there trying to buy the food for their children because they uh, didn't do that in advance? Maybe. Might be a few of those. Hopefully not. We'll Hopefully see. the moms are prepared. Hopefully they are. Unlike me, who's not. But anyway, let's. Uh, you you did point out it was a nightmare out and about, and yes. uh, funnily enough, that's what our topic is today: nightmares and um, trauma. So, over to you now. Tell us a little bit about what trauma, how how it relates to nightmares. So, a nightmare is a trauma reaction. A trauma related nightmare is a little bit different from normal nightmares. The, there's a direct link to the traumatic event or the experience that somebody has gone through when they're having these nightmares. It's like when you have a normal nightmare, you might have a, a bad dream that your neighbors are, you know, having a fight and somebody threw a rock at somebody else. That to me would sound like a little bit of a nightmare, right? But trauma related nightmares are often reoccurring. Mm. I've had those. They're very distressing. They're extremely vivid. And they usually involve reliving or symbolically uh, representing aspects of a traumatic event that you've actually been through. Absolutely. So yeah. for like reoccurring nightmares, have you ever had one of those? I've actually had two recurring nightmares in my life that recurred for, for decades, actually. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Are you open to talking about them? Mm, sure. Well, there was one... Um, when I was a kid, I do you remember the old trolls and things in the old story, fairy tales and things. So in my store, in my dream, it was exactly the same every night. Um, I was coming up to a bridge and I, I think it was off like Billy Goat Gruff. The, do you know that story? I do. Yeah. My brother played one of the Billy Goats on stage when he was in, I think, first or second grade. I went to the play. 
<laughs> so you know what I'm talking about. So in this dream, it's it's a bridge that almost looks like um, you know, those Roman arches on aqueducts. Right. Yeah. So it's a little bit like that in my dream, and it's a white bridge. And underneath the bridge is a is a troll, and he's waiting there for me. And I'm walking up to the bridge. And um, then all of a sudden, an older woman comes up and she's a witch. And she looks like a hag, you know, the traditional kind of image of a hag that we have. And every time she came up towards me, I would scream and then I would wake up. And I think I had that dream probably right up until I was about 15. And it's so vivid, but I still remember it. Can you think of any way that might have been related to some kind of a trauma that you had experienced? Uh, yeah. So um, I had an experience with somebody who was very violent. And um, I think these characters in my dream somehow represented the fear that I felt for my physical safety. Wow. That pretty much nails it. So trauma-related nightmares, they usually contain these themes and images and emotions that are related to what you've been through, and they replicate distressing or frightening details. Hmm. So that that old woman that was coming at you made you feel very unsafe because you'd had experiences of being unsafe. They can lead to you feeling uh, feelings of fear, helplessness, or being completely overwhelmed. And those often last long after you wake up. Yes. And I certainly did feel all of those things. And um, they would last throughout the day. I think I ended up being quite an anxious child. Uh, When I look back on it, you know, obviously at the time you don't think of it. But, um, yeah, looking back on it, certainly all those things that you just mentioned were what I experienced. Yeah. And with reoccurrence, normally regular nightmares uh, occur sporadically, but reoccurring nightmares can happen every single night. And like you said, for sometimes many years after the event happened, they can cause some serious distress and emotional intensity. Um, Normal nightmares don't tend to cause these things. They might kind of startle you and you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm glad that was a nightmare. And you roll back over and you go back to sleep. Did you experience difficulty going back to sleep after waking up from that nightmare? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I was too frightened to go back to sleep in case I might the nightmare continued. Um, and so, yeah, there was a time there where insomnia was quite a problem, even at that really young age. Yeah. Yeah, they do leave you completely um, afraid of falling asleep. A lot of times because you don't want to experience this, experience this again, and you know, you're going exactly. to, yeah. and the lack of sleep can lead to lack of daily functioning. Yeah. Yeah. It absolutely intervenes with normal sleep patterns. It can lead to major disturbances. Like you said, insomnia, uh, you can have a fear of falling asleep and they can contribute to and develop other symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. They can cause you to have flashbacks, intrusive thoughts, and hyperarousal, hypersensitivity. Mm. Exactly. It's, it's amazing the way that works. It's quite frightening the way it works, actually, because um, (laughs) I, again, experienced those things that you've just mentioned, the flashbacks and intensity of emotion. And um, it's it's quite overwhelming. And and it's hard to feel that you have any control over your life when obviously it's your subconscious playing things out that reflecting what's happened to you, um, which we didn't have any control over if we've experienced trauma. It's usually it's an event that we feel completely out of control of that has impacted on us. So um, yeah, the nightmares are actually reflecting that feeling of being unsafe, being out of control, um, lack of certainty, consistency, predictability in one's life. So um, the next thing is, you know, like, well, 
how do we deal with it? What what do we do? Well, how, how do we cope? A big part of that is understanding that there are long term effects. Yeah, you know, we have to deal with it. It's yeah. not a you know how do we deal with it? It when we get around to feeling like it, we must learn to deal with this. Mm. Uh, one of my reoccurring nightmares when I was a kid is one that I had to deal with and didn't know how to for a long time. They started when I was four. Wow. And I remember very vividly, uh, every time this nightmare would come, I would jump up and run into my mom and dad's bedroom and ask if I could sleep in there with them because I was frightened. And eventually my father told me, no, you can't sleep with us every night, Manda. This is happening every night. This should have been a red flag for my parents, but this was 1984 and not everybody had enough information on how trauma affects the brain, especially the brains of children. Exactly. So they didn't know that I was experiencing something pretty serious. I just thought I was just a kid having nightmares. My dad told me that what I should do is to remember that I'm having a dream, which sounds impossible, and to turn the page like I'm reading a book. You know, when you're reading a book and you get to a scary part in the book, what do you do? You turn the page and you're out of the scary part. You can skip forward a few pages. Try that. And it didn't work. I was four. <laughs> Telling that to an adult is even more possible. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so <laughs> when we're looking at like how to deal with it and how, how do we live with it for one, you know, you've got this insomnia, you've got these sleeping disorders, you've got flashbacks now, you were compounding your PTSD. Oh my gosh. Because of these nightmares, you can have further anxiety and fear building in you more than what the traumatic event originally caused. And just like the other trauma uh, reactions that we've talked about previously, the long-term consequences are pretty much the same. You occasionally, eventually start self-medicating. You are slow, so sleep deprived that you believe that if you do something to help yourself fall asleep, like complete, completely get blitzed, blackout drunk, or you take sleeping pills, that you're going to sleep better. And maybe you won't have those nightmares when in reality, the truth is that you're more than likely going to have those nightmares. And now you're just going to be stuck in them because you can't yeah. wake up. It, it, it's just a, what you're really doing in that situation is just pushing down the problem rather mm. than confronting the problem and working through it. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's and, – and, and I've been there. You know, we've talked yeah. about that before. You know, I've um, been down the road of substance abuse and it's not a pretty sight. It's not a, it's not a healthy way to live your your life. So, I think one takeaway from today is very much when when you're experiencing these sorts of nightmares, you need to seek help. You need to be able to work through what it is that's causing it. Absolutely. I mean, the emotional dysregulation itself is enough to really start building up in you to cause all kinds of problems not even necessarily with self-medification, but with, uh, you'll have heightened levels of anger, irritability, um, sadness, emotional numbness. This is going to affect your personal relationships. This is going to affect your friendships, your working relationships with people, your home life, your work life, your grocery shopping life, whatever, because you're going to eventually start taking this out on people. You know, you're in pain. And you don't know how to deal with it. Exactly. So. One of the other things too, just to add in terms of the effects or long-term effects is the impact of the cortisol levels in your body. Yes. And how that can then lead to all sorts of diseases, autoimmune disorders, heart disease, cancer. I mean, it's not dealing with this stuff is actually quite bad for our whole whole being our, our well-being is being impacted on so many levels because we're we're integrated human beings we're not a body and a mind we're 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 one right yeah and 
having reoccurring nightmares can actually uh, affect your cognitive function. So it can uh, give you memory problems. It can cause difficulties with concentration, even if you're not sleep deprived. And it can actually reduce your problem solving abilities, which is really interesting. Um, It can cause you to have a slower reaction time. If you're nearly in a car accident or something like that, you will more than likely get into a car accident if you are having reoccurring nightmares. Yes. It's so bizarre. So like you said, it's really important to be able to seek professional help, reach out to a mental health professional, like a therapist, a counselor. Um, I would suggest, highly suggest uh, a trauma focused therapist, Mm -hmm. somebody who's got experience with this stuff. It's hard to really know how to help unless you are specifically trained in that field. There's also relaxation techniques. And this is something that we've talked about previously, you know, the five senses technique, the breathing techniques, all that stuff. Um, But I know that sounds a little preachy, but you have to have a routine. Yes. Having a consistent sleep routine can really help to promote healthy sleeping habits. But more than that, part of your routine needs to be to take these devices and set them down away from you 30 to 45 minutes before you plan to go to sleep. If you have a problem just sitting there doing nothing, take a book, a physical book with you to bed and sit and read for a little while not a blue screen because this is going to interrupt. This is going to have effects on your brain. There's been so many studies about that. You have to unplug. It's super important. It's also really important. Hmm? No, I was just going to say one of the things that I've been doing recently um, is I, I see an acupuncturist once a month and he suggested to me that I hot you know warm to hot water in a bucket or you know some sort of um, apparatus that you can put water in and soak your feet and add salt to the water so Mm. I've been using Himalayan salt and I've soaked my feet for about 20 minutes and just put some really relaxing music on Um, and and that has really helped me my sleep seems to be deeper and I feel more refreshed in the mornings when I get up so that's that's a, a good little um, hint. And the other thing, going on your phone example uh, or suggestion, I also don't keep the phone in my bedroom. And oh, I know yes. many of, I used to, and it used to be right next to my pillow virtually, you know, on the bedside table. And now I actually have it um, charging in another room overnight and the alarm goes off and I can hear it and I have to get up and actually you know, turn the alarm off. So it gets me out of bed. (laughs) And that's part of the routine because your routine isn't just what you do before you go to bed. It's actually what you do all day. Um, And it's about bringing in healthy eating habits, daily exercise, whether even that's a 10 minute walk, something that is, you know, getting your body moving. Um, I'm very fortunate. I have a garden. And so I spend a lot of time in my garden being very physical, um, digging, planting, sowing, you know, and, and that makes, makes a difference. So yeah, if people physical can, exercise is huge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wear yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that's really helped is to uh, create a comfortable, um, like focused sleeping environment. So first Mm -hmm. of all, having it be a safe environment. I sleep on the side of the bed that's farthest from the door because it just Mm -hmm. makes me feel safer. I know I can roll off if somebody comes in and, you know, hopefully climb my fat butt up underneath the bed or whatever. Um, (laughs) Make sure it's a comfortable temperature for you. Some people like it a little bit colder when they fall asleep. Make sure that you fill your room with calming colors that's huge. And I never realized how important that was, but bright colors like bright red, not smart for your bedroom. (laughs) You want to eliminate potential distractions. 
especially triggers. You know, I consider using relaxation techniques or a white noise machine or something like that, Tim. Well, one of the ways that I've made my bedroom relaxing is uh, I've painted it a really pale blue. Mm. And blue is supposed to be a peaceful colour. Um, so I specifically chose it for that purpose, to make my room more serene. And apparently plants are supposed to be very good in the bedroom too because of the way that they clean the air. So I've got a couple of bamboo plants in my room. Uh, so just little things like that are also part of creating the environment and maintaining good habits or helping you to maintain good habits. Very nice. I like that. Mm. And when you do wake up from a nightmare, do you have any tricks to be able to help yourself to get back to sleep? I actually haven't had a nightmare for a while now. So I That's can't good. think of any recent um, examples, but in the past, I think I was so wound up overall I was highly anxious in my life and I found it very very difficult and um, I then started using uh, an app on the phone using meditation music and I can't remember the I think it's is it delta waves or theta waves I was listening to music that was using the the waves reflecting your brain pattern while you're sleeping so it actually helped to get into a deeper sleep so I remember when I was having the nightmares a couple of years back that's what I did using oh, the nice. app on the phone what about you so we talked about the five senses technique before I cannot have that much in my head when I wake up from a nightmare so <laughs> I use deep breathing, but without doing all the stuff with putting my hand on my chest or one on my stomach and breathing in and breathing out. I do this because when I wake up from a nightmare, my heart is racing and mm. I feel like I'm choking, like I can't breathe. I have to force myself to breathe. So I take a moment and just go, I see breath. You're fine. Do it again. You're fine. My heart starts to calm down that quickly. Mm then I'm able to kind of calm myself a lot more. And of course, for people that are, you know, they're trying all of these things and they're not able to find a way to calm themselves down after a nightmare or nothing is helping, there are nightmare reducing medications. Ah, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. So healthcare professionals uh, have a little bit of training on them, but you want to go to somebody that has experience with this, of course. Um, they have medications that can reduce nightmares. There's medications like Prazosin, P-R-A-Z-O-S-I-N. It was originally designed to treat high blood pressure, but they found that it was really effective in combating PTSD-related nightmares in uh, some people. Yeah. yeah. So super uh, helpful to be able to mm -hmm. know that there is medication out there. That's just one example. There's many out there. And definitely talk to a medical professional because they can help you to get through this. Because this is, this is hard, hard stuff. This Maybe. is not fun to get through on your own. Totally not. So I, I think sort of winding up, um, essentially what we're saying here today is that nightmares are a product of trauma and uh, they're sort of recurring nightmares and so forth. And But there is a way out. And the way out is actually addressing the issue and working with somebody to, to, to make changes in your life. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so wonderful to be able to have you to talk to, because every time I talk to you, I don't have nightmares. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear that. Yeah. I, um, it's it's been an interesting journey this year, hasn't it? Um, we've we've come a long way, and I just want to wish you all the very best um, this festive season. And I'm excited about working with you next year. And I wish all our listeners the very best for the festive season and for 2024. So, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, everybody who's been part of our journey this year. We're looking forward to being part of your life next year. Thank you.